It is the first Q&A of 2018 and I can't wait to answer your guys and gals' questions. So I went onto my Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me your questions. This was an open category, so there's a lot of different questions we're gonna cover. Let's get started, shall we? Catherine Nabel asks, would you rather travel longer and budget more or shorter times and spend more? That answer has changed over the years. Originally, when I first started travel, it was budget, travel longer. Now it's kind of a mixture of both. I do value certain things and I spend a bit more money, especially on things like food. I splurge a bit more and on transportation than I used to. I think it's one of those age things and just the fact that I've been traveling for so long now that I kind of do enjoy the little more luxurious items in travel. Melissa Newman Creates asks, how would you go about planning a whole year trip? Planning for an entire year trip is quite complicated. So I would definitely not plan everything right from the beginning because it will literally take you probably a year to plan a whole year's trip. So I kind of break it into bits and pieces and then work on all the smaller things as I kind of travel along. So I would plan out where exactly I wanted to go, how long approximately I'd want to spend there. So I'd book all my main tickets. I would come up with a budget. I did two whole videos about budgets, by the way. Links are down below if you want a bit more info on that. And then on all the day-to-day -day basis, I would just kind of take each week or each day and plan it as I go because it'd be just too overwhelming to plan an entire year while you're at home before you go because things will change and that'll also leave room for you to allow things to change and kind of change up your plans if you decide that hey i don't like this country as much or i really like this country and uh it gives you a little bit more flexibility in that sense diana doc asks how do i keep travel interesting and not get burnt out um travel burnout is a real thing it i have had it multiple times and i feel it coming on and when i when i do a lot of like extended trips back to back and my key to combating travel burnout is allowing myself one rest days while I'm on the road so days where I literally do nothing I'll just eat and stay at the hotel or stay at a coffee shop I don't do anything and just allow myself to recuperate and rest days at home so my home life is really boring <laughs> It's really not that exciting. I mainly stay in pajamas. We do work. Um, I play with my cats and that kind of normality helps rejuvenate me and get me excited to go back on the road again. So I think there is a good balance between excitement and travel and then just normal everyday life. And that helps me combat my um, combat getting travel burnout. So I never feel like travel is a chore or I never take it for granted because it is such a luxury and I'm so happy that I get to do that for my job. Rachel Lancy asks, have I ever thought about relocating and becoming an expat? I have actually relocated a couple times. I've lived in New Zealand, I've lived in London, I've lived in LA. So I've, and I've also stayed in other places for good periods of time. So I have been done the expat life. Right now I'm just really enjoying being home in Canada. It's where I grew up, it's where I was born, but you never know what the future holds. So we'll see. Maybe somewhere warm and tropical because it's quite cold outside right now. Nikki Bev asks, what camera do I use to take most of our Instagram photos? We use the Sony a7S Mark II, and that is what I use to film and what I use to take photos with, which you should also go follow both me and Matt on Instagram if you aren't already. Natalie Roberts Ohm asks, am I picky with which airlines I fly with? Not really. I, I know there are better, there are airlines that I prefer and I enjoy flying with and others I don't. But when it comes down to it, it's less actually about budget. It's more so about the routes and the time it takes to get to the places I need to go to. And that's kind of what determines which airlines I'm gonna be flying with. Olivia Boudram asks, Nadine, you vlog on places to visit. Are your visits, accommodations, travels, meals covered by the sponsoring company? It's kind of a longer answer that I can give you in a few seconds, but to sum it up is we do a mixture of them. Uh, we do work with companies and sponsors that help fund our trips and we do produce great videos for that that help you as well as showcases cool destinations give you cool tips and we also use that money that we made from that to fund our other travels that are our own so it's kind of a whole like being a youtuber in 2018 that's how we are able to do this full time that's how i'm able to fund all of our travels it also allows me to fund bigger projects and i know that you guys enjoy a lot of the content i always make it clear when it is a sponsored trip versus a non-sponsored trip sophie jane 145 asks what is one place you've wanted to go for years and haven't gone there yet india and guess what guys and gals i might be going there in a few weeks time 
well, like a month, month's time. Ellen Homestead asks, if I had never started YouTube or traveling, where would I have seen myself? Alternate universe Nadine. I would say I would probably be working somewhere in the tech industry because I studied computer science in university. I have a degree in that, so I most likely would have followed that career path and been working somewhere in tech. Who knows? Maybe I'd be actually working at YouTube. Who knows? Arena's Jake asks, have I always wanted to be a world traveler? No, I don't think I did. I definitely didn't grow up wanting to travel the world. Um, I think I wanted to be a veterinarian at some point. Uh, I want to be an interior designer. I want to be an architect. Uh, I studied computer science, like I said before. So there are many things that I envisioned myself doing. I want to be an actor at some point. I wanted to do musicals, even though I realized I didn't have quite the singing chops to do professional musicals. I wanted to be in an orchestra. There are a lot of things that Nadine wanted to do, but instead, she's traveling the world. That's life. Walter's World asks, what inspires me to help other travelers? Honestly, you guys inspire me. I love seeing all of your amazing comments of how my videos, my advice videos have helped you go on your own adventures. I think that just like, it's like this never ending wheel of excitement that I get when I hear about all your amazing trips that you take and all the things that you get to do because I know that I'm really lucky and I'm so excited that I get to travel and show you all these amazing places, but it really makes me even more excited when I get to see you guys going to those places as well. And I know that you're able to go there, so. Yeah, I guess you, you guys inspire me and I inspire you. Ulrich22 asks, if I can live in any country, where would I live and why? Well, I would definitely wanna live somewhere very warm and tropical. I'm a warm weather person and I love just having like a beach and like fruit and jungles and like cool things to do. So I don't really have a specific place but I need to have cats. Like I need to be able to have my cats with me. So I'd probably rule out a few places. Caitlin Dawn asks, when traveling, how careful do you have to be with drinking tap water? And if you have to be careful, how do you get around the issue? I would say like 99% of the time, I'm always just drinking bottled water. It's not hard to find bottled water. Um, most of the hotels will come with bottles of water or I'll buy my own from the corner store. If it is unsafe to like brush your teeth, at the hotel, they'll let you know. There will usually be a sign. When you're eating out at restaurants, again, 99% of the time, they're gonna be selling you bottles of water. They're not gonna be presenting you with tap water just because they can charge you more for a bottle than they can for just free tap water. When it comes to like drinking out of the glass or the bottle, make sure you wipe the rim of the bottle. You don't wanna be drinking from a dirty rimmed bottle. It's the same with like pop cans. Um, glasses, if it looks clean, it's probably okay. There's only one kind of instance where I'm not really buying bottled water is that when I'm hiking or when I'm on a camping trip, in which case I have a, a filtered water bottle that I use with me, has something that takes away all the bacteria and the viruses and the germs. Um, you can also use that for like tap waters as well, but it doesn't get out chemicals. The, the filters don't get out chemicals, it just gets out like bacteria and viruses. So bottle water. Nate Johnson asks, what's the best item I've bought for my travels that's under $100? Probably, it's a two-part question, and it is my eye mask and my neck pillow. This is something that I bought last year, and I've been traveling since 2010, and I've never had a neck pillow or an eye mask, and it's been such a luxurious experience, and it's just made flying so much better. So those are really great purchases that I highly recommend if you've been traveling for a long period of time. Make-A-Wish Ari asks, do I ever feel like I'm missing out on part of the culture of a country since I'm vegan and probably can't eat most of the typical and traditional foods? Yes and no. So I've been vegan for about two and a half years now and I've traveled or been traveling since 2010. So I have had the opportunity to try a whole variety of different, unique, and exotic foods. And I'm really happy I did get to try them, but I'm also really, really happy that I'm vegan and I eat a very plant-based diet. It makes me just feel really, really awesome and good inside. And so it is one of those trade-offs that I kind of 
have given up because I know that I can't eat the local dishes and there are places that we're going that I've never been before and I won't be able to try that. But to me, I'm kind of okay with it. It's in the same sense that I know I can't visit or see every place in the world. I know I can't try or taste everything in the world. And to me, I don't miss meat. I don't miss eggs, dairy. Dairy is a bit trickier. But um, luckily I have Matt that travels with me now so I can at least like see the food and I get to like gauge his reaction on how he feels about it. But I guess it's just one of those things that I've learned to live with and um, I really don't find it hard or miss it that much. XX Coco Pink XX asks, how do I book my trips? Do I get my flights first and then accommodation or do I just plan day trips and just wing it? I will typically always book my flights first because that's like the guarantee that I'm actually gonna be there. And then I'll start booking my accommodation so I'll know how many days I'm gonna spend in each city. Then I'll go with the transportation and activities. So if I'm doing any tours that need tickets or if I need to book like buses or um, w like shuttles or, play or like ways to get in between. And then last, I will find places to eat. So that's kind of my order of booking when I plan a trip. Siska Travel asks, what age do you think people can start solo traveling? And realistically, you solo travel when you are ready. I don't think there's a specific age. However, I definitely wouldn't advise anybody under the age of 18 to travel solo. I think you're still when you're still a teenager, there's a lot you need to learn about the world and yourself. And it isn't until you get a little bit older do you realize how you're able to cope in certain situations. And there's just a lot of other safety aspects of it. But, you know, each person matures on their own and I definitely don't want to give an exact age, but I didn't start traveling until I was 22 years old. And it wasn't just, well, it was a solo trip, but I didn't start traveling until I was 22. So keep that in mind. So thank you guys so much for all of your wonderful questions. There are so many of them though. I wasn't able to answer all of them in this video or also be like hours long. But please, if I didn't get to your question this time, ask it again on my next Instagram post for my next q and I plan on doing many more this year. So make sure you're following me on Instagram because that is where I will always ask for my Q and A questions. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. And I will see you guys again in a few days time with another video. Bye.